And just speak nice and loud if you can. Tell me about the testing again. So I there was a, a huge line when you come out of the doors uh, where people usually greet you. There was people standing there asking if you had to get tested or if you're going to get tested. You say yes. You go down. You go to the right and you go through this little walkway. And then there's all these signs saying scan Q, QR, QR code. So you scan it. You're brought to this portal on Facebook, uh, on uh, Safari where you have the registration forms. You file that out. And then that takes a while, about 10 minutes. And then um, then you go to this the worker and then they talk to you and fill the rest out and everything. And then you're taken to a nurse or I'm not too sure if they have to be nurses or doctors. Um, you get tested on each nostril for 10 seconds and then you're done. They ask to see the back of your passport for a little a sticker, um, and then you're done. Needless to say, then the airport wasn't as thorough as what you thought, if that's no. a safe way to put it? The way that I was hearing it on um, online and everything, that was going to be this huge deal, this huge ordeal, but it wasn't. Which concerns or worries you? Yeah, because it, it makes me feel then like, is it even, is it even worth going through all this if they're not gonna be a hundred percent? There's no reason, there's no point in doing something if it's not gonna be a hundred percent, if it's only gonna be 50%. In other words, it's like a show. Yeah. Like if that's, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I no, mean, is it's that? the half, sorry for my language, the half assing it. Oh, yeah. Got out of the, got into the hotel. Yeah, um, I was taken by a per taxi to the hotel, um, and then you don't pay the you don't pay the taxi driver. They fill out a little card and give it to the receptionist, um, and then when I was checking in, they asked me again what my food uh, preferences were, and I said I'm gluten and lactose intolerant, and I only eat fish and chicken. I saw her write it down, and then she told me to pay for the hotel, and I said sorry. Um, the hotel's already paid for and she insisted that it wasn't. I said, well, I can't. I have nothing on me. Um, and then I said, okay, my mom's coming here anyways to drop off a care package. I'll let her know. She said, okay. And then they don't, uh, they don't take you to your room. You're told just to go to your room. And they say, don't go out. But they don't monitor. Um, so I got there and then I called my mom and I said, okay, I'm in room 116. Um, you can come visit me outside my window. And then my mom got there and then I hear a knock on my door. And I'm like, okay. Um, I open it and there she is standing with a bag of food for me. And I thought, okay, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous. What's the point in this then? Um, What's the point of being there? Exactly. If, if you're allowed to have a visitor come to your room, what's the point of having this whole show? Um, and then she brought me the care package because I was afraid I wasn't going to get food. I wasn't going to be able to eat the food. Um, and then, like, we couldn't hug or anything, obviously, because um, I had to wait for my test results still. But I was so shocked that she was able to actually come straight up to my room. Through the circumstances, it was... Enough was enough, I guess. You were there two days? Yeah. What was sort of the last straw? Um, the last straw... Ella, forgive me. How long were you supposed to be there? Three days. Okay. Or th three nights. I think it was three nights okay. or something. Okay. What was the last straw? Um, me calling the front desk five times to tell them I had food allergies and them still bringing me food I can't, I can't, I couldn't eat. Um, so I got there and then my mom brought the food and then that night I got my dinner and I didn't think anything of it because we had already told them twice about my food allergies, one booking and when I got there. So I ate it and then I looked the next day on the front and it said buttered chicken, wheat berry salad, chocolate cake. And I thought, okay, maybe that's why my stomach hurt so much last night because I ate buttered chicken and wheat berry salad. But I was so out of it from flying all day and being a little jet lag. Um, and then the next day for breakfast, I got creamy yogurt. I can't, I can't eat that. So I'm very thankful that I had the care package from my mom. Um, and then for lunch, they gave me a chicken Caesar wrap with creamy potato salad. So I called to let them know and they said, okay, just order in. Well, we bait you $50 and just order your food in. 
So I did, and then um, I was waiting for my daddy to come after after the few hours, and then my dinner never came. And this was about eight o'clock at night, two hours after it was supposed to come. So I called him and I said, hey, listen, um, I still haven't gotten dinner yet. And she said, oh, sorry, we forgot about you. We have nothing for you. Just order in. I said, what? I said, order in. I ordered in for lunch because you gave me wrong food. And then um, she couldn't find me anything. And I guess she felt bad because she gave me her personal dinner she brought, a lean cuisine. We're in a pandemic. You're given these specific orders to give them food from the specific place. And then you're giving them your outside food. I couldn't eat it because there was dairy in it. Um, but I had called that front desk so many times that day. Was and the I, hotel not the, well, not the, maybe you wouldn't know. Was the hotel busy or could you tell? I couldn't tell. Okay. And then the next day for breakfast, after calling the front desk the day before five times to tell them I can't eat this and to say even more times I'm lactose and gluten intolerant, for breakfast, they gave me a creamy yogurt, a waffle, and a raisin bran muffin. None of which I could eat. And then... By the end of this day, I had about nine oranges and seven bananas because they supplied me because I kept saying I couldn't eat it. So every time with my next meal, they would bring me more fruit. And did your mom come and pull you out more or less or did you say I'm out of here or how did it, how did it go down the last straw? Well, on the Monday night after I said they didn't give me dinner or anything and they didn't have anything for me and they, she gave me her personal dinner, she said, okay, I'm coming tomorrow to get you out no matter what. And that morning at 4 a.m. or something, I got my test results. So it was no problem. Once you have your test results, you're allowed to go to your um, secondary quarantine place. Um, and then when I checked out, they didn't even ask for my results. They never even asked if I got my results or what it was. They just said, oh, you're checking out early. Nothing. And then I restated that this was the worst hotel stay I've ever had. Um, I couldn't eat anything that they brought me. And the first night I had the worst stomach pains and I didn't understand why because I thought they gave me the food I asked for. Um, <clears throat> they just... To me, it was, why are we doing this when we can't do it right? Why ask someone if they want something special if you're not gonna follow it? And even on one of the phone calls, I said I'm lactose intolerant and gluten intolerant about five different times until she finally heard me. She said, oh, you're lactose intolerant. And I said, yeah. And you seem, not that I've met you before, but you seem to have a lot of patience. I could imagine if, uh... Yeah, the first time I thought, okay, I didn't read it. It, half it and happens. Half. It's half and half. It, it happens. And then the second time I thought, okay, <laughs> um, I can't eat this breakfast. And then by the third time I said, okay, this is, this is enough. Um, and the front desk is very difficult to get a hold of. I called multiple times. I called the one time and no one picked up and I was, it was ringing for about three minutes. The second time I called was about 10 minutes later. I was put on hold for another five minutes and even being able to come to a conclusion, that took time. And you gotta have patience. Yeah. And patience is wearing thin. Yeah. And then by the time dinner came and they didn't give me anything, I thought, okay, this is, <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. You can't just not feed someone. And then um, I couldn't just say, okay, I'll just eat the stuff they give me because I don't, I'm not in the mood for, to be in pain. You think prisoners get treated better than that? Yes. <laughs> prisoners have a hot meal. Um, they have regular food times and they can eat. And if they have a dietary restriction, then they're provided with the food that they can eat and that they listen. For me, I'm not too sure. I've seen a few TikToks about it um, or a few videos and it's just why make a big show? Why make a, this big thing if you can't do it right? Before you can open, get all the kinks out. And I understand you have to go through trial and error, but to be the error is not fun. And you'd think it would have been worked out by now. 
they've been helping. This isn't the first or second week. Exactly. Were you texting your mom? Uh, I kept calling her, FaceTiming her and saying, hey, this is what's happening. And without her food, without the care package she brought me, I would have, I wouldn't have been able to eat anything. Yeah, okay. And then by the time, they did give a discount, but it's still um, absolutely ridiculous. I wasn't forced to go to the hotel, but I was doing it because it's the law. I'm not going to break the law. And I was doing what is expected of me, expected of a good person or a person who wants to help this world with the pandemic. I went to do the things that was, that was expected of me. I did everything right and I'm still on the shit end of it. What did you think for that amount of money that was paid for the hotel, what did you think you were getting? To me, I expected that I was paying for security, the hotel itself, food and medical staff, but I seen no security whatsoever, no medical staff, so on my assumptions, I paid for the bed and food, which I didn't get. So basically, I just paid for a bed for two nights. I treated worse than a prisoner? Yeah. A prisoner would have been treated like a four-star guest. And in a, in a prison than in, in that hotel. You pay so much money to be treated horribly. If I would have known that, I would have second guessed my entire trip. I was scared in the first place to go to the hotel quarantine because of things I've heard. And now here we are <laughs> talking about it. And it's, everything came true. Exactly. What would you say for other people then, for other people that are traveling, other people that have daughters coming home, what advice would you give them? Yeah, so I can guess it. Wait until the hotel quarantine is no longer a law because they're going to go through something horrible. They're gonna, you're going to get phone calls on phone calls. I would wait until this law is gone, until, this, until it's gone, and then I would fly, or whatever. Would I, you, if you had to do it again, would you come straight home? Like as in straight home to Port Hope? Yeah, yeah. There's even stories of people doing that, going to the airport, saying they can't afford the hotel stay, and just being let, let go. Let go to their home where they're staying or wherever they're staying. And again, you just wanted to do it just to be the right person. Exactly. I want to be part of society that helped with this pandemic because there's groups of us, and I'm not saying anything bad about it, but I'm the type of person who wants to follow, who needs to follow the rules to feel good. Or not feel good, to feel like I'm helping out somehow. Even though I can't help anyone who got sick or who is sick, but I'm helping with stopping the spread of the disease. And if we all do our part. Exactly, if we all do our part, we could have been out of this by now. But it just must be frustrating when you feel the government has failed me, has failed us completely, completely. For my mom to be able to go straight up to my hotel room door and give me my package to my hands, I ask myself the question, why? Why even bother? Not that you didn't want to see her, but it's just exactly. the whole thing is, why? as soon as you see her face, it's like, like you say, why? Exactly. Why bother making this a rule or a law if no one's going to follow it? 